We will now begin the Community Life Workshop. This workshop provides helpful information for your life at AP House and as a student. We will be covering these topics today. Number one, what is AP House? AP House is not just a place to live, but it is an international dormitory that focuses on developing mutual exchange, creating unity, and improving intercultural communication and language skills through thought-provoking interactions. Upon entering APU, international students spend their first year at AP House learning the customs for life in Japan. Domestic students who wish to live in AP House spend their first year together with international students, proactively participating in activities to interact with other residents. This year marks AP House's 20th anniversary. A student resident assistant, or RA, resides on each floor. RAs promote exchange within the dormitory, help maintain a clean environment, and assist in solving issues that may arise in dormitory life. In addition to AP House 1 and 2, there are AP House 3 and AP House 4 in downtown Beppu. Students in their second year or above and domestic exchange students live in AP House 3, while graduate students and international students live in AP House 4. Number 2. AP House Rules and Etiquette As it was explained in the handout received when arriving at AP House, you are expected to participate in two AP House activities as a resident, one of which is the floor meetings. During these workshop-style floor meetings, you obtain important knowledge for your life at APU and your life in Japan. There will be eight floor meetings during your residential period. They are held on the first Thursday of each month from 8 p.m. when classes are in session. These meetings are compulsory. Circle activities, preparation, and meetings for on-campus events, assignments, and part-time jobs are now counted as valid reasons to be absent. Next is the second AP House activity, Kitchen Duty. We call Kitchen Duty KD. KD is when the residents clean the common areas such as the kitchen and laundry room using a rotating shift system. Regardless of whether you use the kitchen and laundry room or not, you need to participate in the cleaning as a member of the floor community. By doing so, you learn public manners and foster an appreciation of others. Additionally, since you'll be doing KD with other residents, you can develop better relationships and cooperative skills as you communicate during this 20-minute activity. If you skip a floor meeting or a KD shift, you'll face a penalty. For the first and second absences, you'll receive a warning and mentoring from the RA each time. For the third absence, you'll have a conference with a student office staff member and sign a pledge. Your fourth absence will result in you being evicted from AP House. The number of absences is not reset at the end of each semester. Absences are calculated on an annual basis. This record is taken into consideration during RA selections. It may affect other selection processes at APU. The AP House activities are designed to create a stronger community, so please remember the purpose of each activity. This is the floor arrangement of AP House. For safety and from intercultural understanding standpoint, we have mixed gender floors as well as floors that are designated specifically for males and for females. The third floors of each building are mixed gender floors. The first and second floors in single buildings and the first and fourth floors in shared buildings are for males. The fourth and fifth floors in single buildings and the second and fifth floors in shared buildings are for females. Since residents can go between floors freely, there is a lot of interaction among residents. However, AP House is also a place to live, so we ask males to be considerate and not to go to female floors. RAs, office staff, and security officers will go on to female floors when their duties require them to do so. Immediate family members and moving companies may go to female floors, but males are not allowed to enter the kitchens, laundry rooms, restrooms, or any common spaces on all female floors. The next topic is about quiet hours. From 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., please pay extra attention to noise. Please never be noisy in the kitchen. When you listen to music, please make sure to put on earphones. Playing musical instruments is allowed between 10 p.m. and 8 p.m. However, you are allowed to play the piano in the lobby from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. You have to put on earphones in the morning and after 8 p.m. What is considered to be an annoying sound is different from person to person. Therefore, please be consciously aware of your sound levels and whether you are disturbing others. If you think that it is okay to be noisy either because other people are being noisy or the RAs are not giving warnings, you are wrong. If you are 20 years old or older, you are allowed to drink alcohol in your room. However, when people drink together with their friends and start to feel elated, their voices tend to get louder. Sounds travel farther at night. So while you and your friends are being loud and having a good time, the people in the rooms next to you trying to sleep are suffering. If you want to be loud, please go to karaoke downtown. If you are invited to a party in AP House where the music is blaring, please have the guts to say, let's be quiet. We RAs are strict with the rules so residents can live in AP House comfortably. If you are causing problems, it doesn't matter if it is late at night, 
or early in the morning, we'll go to where you are and warn you. However, we are also students, so we hope you let us sleep peacefully too. Next, we will discuss bike etiquette. The parking area for motorbikes is located by W Building. You need to go to the Creotech office on the first floor in A Building and apply to park on campus. This procedure is required for residents in AP House 4 as well. Please get on and off your motorbike at the gates of the AP House premises. When you leave, please push your motorbike to the gates and turn on the engine. When entering the parking area, please turn off the engine at the gates and push your bike to the parking area. It is dangerous to ride your motorbike between the parking area and gates because of the pedestrians in the area. Also, starting your engine in the parking area causes the sound to echo, which is extremely disturbing to the residents in W Building. Please be considerate of these residents. Visitors also should respect this rule. You are responsible for explaining this rule as well as other rules when inviting your friends from downtown. The next topic is about locking your door. When you leave your room, please make sure to lock the door as well as the window if you live on the first floor. If you think you do not need to lock your door because you're just going to the kitchen for a second or going to take a quick shower or you know everyone on your floor, you're an easy person to rob. Please always lock your door and be alert at all times. As previously mentioned, anyone can go back and forth between floors except for female floors. Visitors are permitted during the designated times. Unfortunately, several theft cases are reported each semester. The majority of people who get their belongings stolen from their rooms do not lock their doors. It is considered trespassing to enter a room without the room owner's permission. Plus, if you steal someone's belongings, it is called theft. People who engage in such behavior can be suspended for one quarter and lose their scholarships. The next topic is harassment. Please keep three points in mind. Number one, never assume your actions will be accepted as you intended. Since AP House is a multicultural environment, it leads to your first step as a global citizen to respect and understand each other. In the place where various cultures and values coexist, please refrain from making comments that will hurt another person or actions that will evoke discomfort. Number two, never think any amount of harassment is acceptable. Even if you intend to express friendliness, your comments and actions can evoke discomfort to another person regardless of your intentions. Never make a selfish conjecture that your comments and actions to any extent can be tolerable to another person. Please be especially careful with sexual comments and physical contact. What you think is nothing could create emotional distress to another person. Number three, never presume you and the other person feel the same about your relationship. If you become aware that another person rejects or dislikes your comments or actions, don't repeat it. Please be mindful that people don't always show how they feel about your behavior. Let's take this opportunity to look at and reconsider our daily comments and actions. Please turn to page 16 of the concept book. In case you break the rules in AP House, you'll face disciplinary actions. In the first offense, you'll meet with a staff member from the AP House office, have a conference, and sign a pledge. If you violate the rules again, you'll meet with a staff member from the AP House office and follow the same procedure. However, this time, you'll be asked to move out of AP House. In case of violations such as property damage, your track record can have a negative impact on selections for student organizations and scholarships. Violations such as underage drinking and smoking, violence, theft, harassment, property damage, and discrimination will be handled according to the Litimekan Asia Pacific University regulations on punitive measures for students. As a student and resident, you are expected to demonstrate common sense and control. You can find the AP House 1 and 2 guidebook on the student office homepage in the housing section. Please make sure you read it thoroughly. Number 3. Smoking, Alcohol, and Drugs The next topic is smoking. As 80% of the enrollees in the spring semester are minors, many of you are 18 or 19 years old. Therefore, we believe that the RAs and the office staff won't be seeing you in the smoking area throughout your residence period. If we do, you'll be punished for breaking the law and AP regulations. Please keep that in mind. To those of age who smoke, we won't ask you to stop smoking, but please smoke in the designated area and never throw your cigarette butts on the ground. We just would like to say that smoking does nothing but harm. As you already know, smoking increases the risk of various cancers, such as lung cancer. Every year, the number of deaths from smoking-related factors worldwide is 5.4 million people, and 600,000 people die from secondhand smoke. Your loved ones can also be victims. Smoking changes the skin, teeth, and hair in ways that can add years to your looks. The World Health Organization introduced a policy called M-Power to help countries reduce demand for tobacco. M for monitor, monitor tobacco use and prevention policies. P for protect, 
protect people from tobacco smoke. O for offer, offer help to quit tobacco use. W for warn, warn the dangers of tobacco. E for enforce, enforce bans on tobacco advertising, promotion, and sponsorship. R for raise, raise taxes on tobacco. The longer you wait, the more difficult it will be to quit smoking. If you want to quit, you can consult with the health clinic. The next topic is about alcohol. According to the International Agency Research on Cancer, alcohol is a carcinogen just like tobacco. Even small amounts could give you a heart attack or a stroke. Tolerance to alcohol is different from person to person. If you chug a can of alcohol, you could die from acute alcohol intoxication. According to the research of Oxford University, it has been found that alcohol damages the brain, resulting in memory lapses, sleeping disorders, and lower grades. Students who are 20 years old or older should drink alcohol moderately and focus more on academic and extracurricular activities that will enrich their student life. The next topic is about drugs. First of all, laws concerning drugs differ from country to country. Drugs that may be legal in your country could be illegal in other countries, resulting in you being severely punished. Don't expect to use the I had no idea excuse. It won't fly with the authorities. There are quite a few countries where you may be sentenced to the death penalty for drug-related crimes. Those countries include China, Bangladesh, India, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and Guatemala. In Japan, you can end up in jail if you get involved with drugs even just once. You'll be deported and may be forever banned from entering Japan if you have a foreign passport. You definitely will be expelled from the university. You could lose your health, family, friends, and more than you can imagine because of that one time. Now please watch a 7-minute documentary video that has ex-drug users talking about their experiences in agony. It was around when I was 13 or 14, and you kind of find yourself trying to pick and choose your friends, and also at the same time, you know, you're not really worried about what you want to accomplish at that time, but what people you want to hang out with. I wanted to fit in. I wasn't a popular kid in school, and it made me forget about all that. You know, like, oh yeah, everybody else is doing it, so I'm going to do it. Friends were doing it. They just wanted to jump right in and have fun. I did drugs because it seemed like it was fun. It was the cool thing to do. The cool thing to do was to get high, go to parties. Growing up, you know, you're struggling. Couldn't deal with life, so I didn't have to deal with life. I wouldn't listen to anyone. I was stubborn, like as a rebellious thing. This is what the rebel kids were doing. I just wanted to see what it was like. I started experimenting with it. Experimenting with friends. First tried it because I was bored. I was always up to try something new. You know, when I was growing up, we had this program that was just say no, just say no. People are just saying no, but they're not saying why. It's like telling a person no, and then they go do it. Sparked my interest on drugs. I knew that they were bad, and I always heard about this addiction, but I didn't know what it meant. That's probably the number one reason why I did drugs in the first place. I just didn't know. Drugs are everywhere. They're in magazines, movies, um, TV shows, you know, billboards. They're all over the place. You know, in the movies they make it look they make it look cool, but in real life it's not cool. It's uh, it's a serious problem. And a lot of times, they try to glamorize drugs. Like, make drug dealers or getting high look cool. But that's only in the movies. In real life, it's a whole different story. All drugs, whether we're talking about alcohol, marijuana, LSD, these are all essentially poisons. It would depend on the amount that you take. I mean, a lesser amount might just speed you up, make you feel really active. A stronger amount or a stronger dosage would act as a sedative, make a slow, sluggish, tired, and even more amounts it would kill you. You'd have an overdose. Every drug works in these stages. It's only really the amount needed to make the effect that's the difference from drug to drug. A person who's taking drugs, whether for physical pain or just to try and block off any sensations they don't want to feel, those sensations are actually just being pushed away and getting worse and worse. You're going to be totally numb and just not be able to feel anything. When you take drugs, the drug goes through your bloodstream and later on in your life, that drug can, you know, come back up and into a flashback when you use the drug. 
you could have taken LSD one day and like a year down the road it could come back into effect and you can start hallucinating again. And it's not just LSD, it's every drug. So you can get hit with the effects of a drug even a long time after you stop taking them. Drugs definitely affect the mind. Uh, everything you see around you is different than what's really going on. You can't hear correctly, see correctly. All of your senses are totally thrown off. Your perception is definitely distorted. It makes it dangerous for you and others because you don't know what's going on. You can't handle things you know, the way they're supposed to be handled. Drugs affect your memory so much. It doesn't matter if you're taking them for a long time or just a short period of time. I know like when I first got like, just tried studying and stuff more, like I really couldn't concentrate, I couldn't pay attention. I went from like a straight A student to like, you know, a B minus student, C student. Then I quit going to school and I would get really frustrated. It's like your brain won't function. You can't think straight. Like, everything is messed up. I never got anything done. I would start on something and I wouldn't finish it. It just didn't happen. It was just unbearable. I, I couldn't deal with life at all. I couldn't get a job because I was, like, just out of it completely. My decisions were based off of, you know, what this drug is telling me to do rather than, you know, what I want to do. I got them from friends in school. Two friends. A friend of mine. And my older brother's friends. Bunch of girlfriends. Boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. Older guy. My dad. My cousin. My brother. My older sister. Older kids. My buddy just said, you know, you can do it every once in a while, it'll be no problem. He told us it was going to be the best thing we've ever done. You can do it once, you'll be fine. It's not going to hurt you, really. It's just a little pick-me-up. You can't get addicted to it. They said it's not something that you're going to be taking every day. It's just something that you can take when you want to have fun. Oh, this is going to be a fun time. It's a fun drug to be on. Makes you easier to talk to girls and they said it'll bring you up it's gonna make you feel different it's gonna you're gonna like it you're gonna feel good it's all in your face that that's that's the thing to do all it is is taking a drug dealer's word for it when you're trying to get someone hooked you'll say whatever you can to get a customer you're lying for them to believe you so you can make money I would tell people it's fun, makes you energetic, makes you more likable, it's something you know people want to be around. I've done whatever they wanted to hear in order to pick that first one up. You know, when I was 12 years old, I didn't say, hey, I want to be 24 in rehab. I never said that to myself, you know, but that's what became true. You know, and I never thought about it when I, was, when I was 13 years old. I started smoking pot. I was that kid that started out with marijuana and played around with certain party drugs and whatnot, and I told myself specifically that I would never do certain things, cocaine, heroin, and it only took a short time for me to finally accept it and be like, okay, I'll try that. I had no idea where it would lead me to almost dying, to stealing, lying, cheating, ruining relationships, it didn't matter. I didn't get into sports, I didn't get into the clubs, I didn't even go to prom. It left me with uh, living on the streets without a family, you know, and it's, is that what I set out to be? No, you know what I mean? I was just set out to have a good time at college parties. The drugs robbed me of all the pleasure of life. The drugs took away my family, the drugs took away my girlfriend, my Friends. I looked back on a five, six years of my life and saw that all I had done is absolutely just ruined incredible opportunities that I had to have success and hurt all the people around me. It's not just something that's going to affect tomorrow, it's going to affect forever. You don't have to find out every, you know, everything for yourself. You don't have to find out what a car accident experience is like. Do yourself a favor. Don't fall into the same footsteps as so many other people have. And realize that you could be the guy living under the bridge shooting heroin. You might think you won't get like that. None of us ever did. And we wound up in those same shoes. What I would tell people is just, I would give them my story. I would tell them my exact story. I would tell them my story. A story like mine. Insanity of my story. Ultimately, it comes down to their own decision making. You have to get the facts. Check the statistics. Find out for yourself. Find out for yourself. Find out the actual truth of, of what these are and what they're going to do to your life. I would just say to anybody, you know, if you're going to do something, you know, if you're really going to do something, go educate yourself on it beforehand. I think there's a lot of truth in that. Number four, disasters and evacuation. When a big earthquake occurs, an announcement will be made in AP House. 
When you are asked to evacuate, please follow the instructions of the announcement and evacuate immediately. If you are using electronic devices, make sure to turn them off. However, don't forget your own safety comes first. The evacuation spot is where the guest parking lot is located on campus. When evacuating, please do not use the elevator. You never know when the elevator will stop working. Instead of using the connection bridge to get to the parking lot, please cross the road between AP House and campus. You can find an evacuation route poster on the wall next to the elevator on each floor. Only press the emergency button if there's a fire in the kitchen or your room. Number five, opportunities to interact. In AP House, various events are planned where you can interact with other residents. First, there are events such as floor and building events, as well as house events that we, the RAs, plan and hold. In those events, you get to eat dishes from all over the world, play games and sports, and enjoy cultural activities. You can enrich those events by helping us prepare. Next, there are events organized by the University's Mixed Program. You have opportunities to participate in fitness classes such as yoga, pilates, and zumba, as well as cooking programs to brush up on your cooking skills. You can also join cultural programs such as kimono fitting and tea ceremony. It is free of charge, and everyone is welcome. The Peace Tours give you opportunities to participate in field trips that go to sightseeing and scenic spots in Oita and to local eateries. They also provide chances to visit historical heritage sites in Japan and think about peace. Number six, pledge. We have come to our last point of the day. We will now read the residence pledge together. Please take out your pledge. First, the period of residence. Since you are spring enrollees, your residence period is from your move-in date to the end of February 2021. You are expected to live in AP House for 11 months to learn how to live on your own and acquire the understanding of Japanese public manners and community rules. You are also expected to enhance your communication skills by interacting with residents from different countries. The next topic is about complying with laws. You are in Japan now, therefore the laws and rules of Japan apply. Please remember the laws and rules in your country may differ from those in Japan. Giving the excuse that you didn't know is not acceptable. As explained earlier, please do not forget that the legal age for smoking and drinking alcohol is 20 years old. Also, you'll be severely punished if you possess or use drugs, drive under the influence of alcohol, or drive without a driver's license that is valid in Japan. The next topic is about complying with university laws. In addition to complying with the laws of Japan, you need to comply with the rules of the university and the social norms and ethical conventions. If you break any of these rules, you may be expelled or suspended, and your scholarships may be suspended as well. Examples are theft, driving without a license, drunk driving, drugs, violence, harassment, and underage drinking and smoking. The next topic is about complying with the AP House rules. You must comply with the laws and rules we have just explained. The rules of AP House can be found on page 16 in the concept book, as well as the AP House guidebook on the student office homepage. Lastly, we'll go over important reminders. In order to prevent theft, please make sure to lock your door. You're responsible for managing your own valuables and personal belongings. There are times when the university or security office staff need to enter your room to conduct tasks such as facility or equipment inspections. You'll be notified in advance when these inspections will occur. However, in cases when inspections must be conducted at short notice or during emergencies, the university or security office staff may enter your room without your permission. You are not allowed to exchange rooms without the approval of the Dean of Student Affairs. If you have any problems with your room, please consult with the AP House office. Please treat all the furniture and equipment in your room with care. You are not allowed to modify or rearrange them. There are metal pipes near the window and bed. If you hang anything other than clothes on this pipe, it may break. Last but not least, we repeat, please lock your door even if you leave your room just for a short while. Now, we hope you fully understand the content of today's guidance and pledge. Please check the box and sign the pledge. RAs are collecting the pledges. Please pass it to an RA. This concludes the Community Life Workshop.